Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today I'm going to be continuing from a video I made in April I think, which is going through the books I've read this year so far. At that time I think my reading goal was like 20 or 24 books and I had to double it to 40 I think so I've read that many and now I've read 50 books this year. We are two thirds of the way into the year and I'm not sure what to increase my reading goal to but you know Today we're going to go through the books I've read since April. I'm not going to do every single book I mentioned, I've not mentioned, every single book I've read because that would be quite a lengthy video. So I'm going to do like the highlights because there's some like rereads from books and series I read when I was younger so I'm going to like miss out those and just skip to like the new ones. So let's begin. The first book of interest I read was Monsters of Men which is the third book in the Chaos Walking trilogy series. Trilogy. Hmm by Patrick Ness and all I can say about that is it's the finale. I personally I think it's like the best book in this series. I love the first two but the finale was like something else and it's so long ago that I can't really remember much about it but I remember you know it was such a long book but I was completely blown away of how it just managed to like finally tie everything together and tie in like all these I think there are like three different viewpoints maybe four but it all fitted together and it just concluded the series so like perfectly. That was a 5 out of 5 stars. The next one was They Both Die at the End which is on my top shelf being very shiny. And that's a book I got it, I was like very interested in it because the title is quite catchy. When I f so I first saw it when it came out, then I read some reviews and I like, started getting the worries about oh is it going to be overhyped and I read it and I loved it because I'm a sucker for a tragedy. And I basically read it because I wanted to know, do they both die at the end? I'm just going to leave it at that. It was 5 out of 5 stars. The next book was Stags by M.A. Bennett, which I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. <laughs> I only really got the book so I saw it on a like 2 for £7 off on Asda and I liked the cover so I got it and it was an enjoyable read, just, um, it was enjoyable, it kept me reading, just I wasn't very invested in it and I didn't believe in it, I didn't connect to any of the characters at all. Actually, let's just read you the summary of the book, because whatever I say is not going to do it justice. So it's all on term and this one girl is struggling to like settle in to this boarding school, but as she's still struggling to make friends, she receives an invitation from the like nine, not nine, six like popular people with their like private estate and all that kind of thing. So she's going to spend the half term weekend at the country manor of the posh guy, uh, the most popular and wealthy boy. And there's two others with her and the six popular ones. And the students are at mercy of their capricious host and over the next few days as the three blood sports become increasingly dark and twisted, she comes to the horrifying realisation that those being hunted are not wild game, but the very misfits Henry has brought with him from school. So the description basically spoils the entire book. And I remember I didn't connect to anyone, I was so unsatisfied with the ending as well. But it was alright, so I gave it three. I think I'm very generous with my ratings. Or on Goodreads, I think two stars is like the it was okay thing, so I should really give it two stars, but like I feel bad. But it was probably two stars. The next was Heartless by Marissa Meyer, which is the cover of it was so beautiful and shiny, and I've seen so much about it, and so many people saying they loved it, so I bought it, and I didn't like it. <laughs> This is another book where I, en I enjoyed a lot of the ideas behind it and the way it was written. I just didn't connect to the plot or the characters at all. So I think that was, yeah, that was another three stars. But I wanted to love it so much because I liked the ideas and the description of the book. But it was, I know it's meant to be based on Alice in Wonderland, but it was unbelievable. The plot was unbelievable and I just didn't connect to the characters. So I'm quite sad about that one. Next up was This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada, I think her name. I don't, I'm not quite sure how to read her name. And this was another book on the £2 for £7 offer. So 
what was on that offer? This mortal coil, heartless, stags, and I got three dark rounds on this offer. And this was a book I picked up because it had like the zombie apocalypse vibe going on, but it had technology and science in there. And as someone who really loves science but chose to do art instead, I was very interested in this book. And I did actually love it, I think. What did I give it? Where's my rating? I gave this four stars. So it was kind of on, it was verging into five star territory, then there were some plot twists I really was not happy with, which would have dragged it down to three stars, but then I averaged it out to four. But this is a book I really loved, so if you're into like zombie apocalypse scenarios and technology and science, this is definitely a book for you. After that came, where are we? Oh, I read the first Trials of Apollo book, The Hidden Oracle. I don't really have much to say on this, besides I think I will love like every single thing Rick writes. And he can just milk this series, like this whole demigod idea, for all it's worth, and I will keep buying every single book. Like, I mean, I loved it. Especially because, as I guess I'm kind of an, like, an older teenage reader now, and these are more middle grade books, that is so nice that it's just nice to read something that's easy for a change. And I love the whole demigod thing, I love the gods and the mythology behind it, and I love his style of writing. So I'm going to love everything he writes, but what did I give this? I think I might have given it four stars, yeah. Because like, it's a good book, but it's not the, like, the best of the best. But I think... Um, I don't even remember what I think anymore. And then I read the third book in The Raven Cycle, which was Blue Lily Lily Blue, which I also loved, and that gave... I th that must have had five stars. I gave that five stars. Ugh. Maggie can do no wrong and I'm currently reading the fourth book and I'm going to be like so sad when this series ends I'm going to keep rereading it on repeat forever because this world is just so magical it, like it's set in the real world but it's I want to be in this alternate reality so much and then I read the sequel to Caraval <coughs> that was a weird thing so I think I mentioned Caraval in my last one of these videos. Last is that way, isn't it? <laughs> but I loved Caraval. I gave it, it might have been five stars, it might have been like a 4.5. But as much as I loved Caraval, I loved Legendary more. Like, Caraval is a great book. It's like one of the, my favourite books I've read. But Legendary somehow tops that. And I thought it was impossible for a sequel to be better than like the first book. But it was incredible because this is told through the perspective of the sister so Donatella Tella, yeah and because she was like quite absent in the first book for obvious reasons but this entire book was told through her perspective and this time there was like a lot more to lose and I, I, I'm just gonna keep saying that I loved it for every single book because I'm not for, like for someone who's a writer I'm very bad at words but this book was incredible but it's probably the best sequel I've ever read. So I've realised I can hear my neighbours and I'm not sure if they can hear me. Then I read the sequel to Trials of Apollo which was very good. I reread the first book from the Ashes trilogy which is a zombie apocalypse thing. Very good. Then I read the second Grisha book by Lee Bardu- what is it Bardugo? I read Siege and Storm. And I quite liked the first book in the Grisha trilogy, which I've blanked on the name of. It was Something and Bone. I quite liked that, but the sequel was, like, this sequel was incredible. And I'm not going to say, like, compare it to the whole legendary thing where the sequel was so much better, even though the first book was incredible, because the second book in this trilogy was incredible, but the third one I did not like at all. I mean, not at all. I liked a lot of parts of it, but it was over like a three star. So this went, this series went from good, great, down to like, nah. And I wanted to love it so bad, but like I did like it, but that was it. I liked it. Then I read Three Dark Crowns, and this is this is a book. I think it's been out for a while now. And I've seen everyone saying how much they love it everywhere. There's so much hype around this. But I've read some reviews. But pretty much everywhere, all over like Instagram and Twitter, is all good things. But then I read the reviews and I was like, hmm, 
I might not like this so much but I read it. So the story is told, like the chapters are split between these three queens. Apart from in each chapter there's lots of different perspectives which muzzle me up a bit because I don't think some of them are really relevant to the plot. And the sister I liked the most had the least chapters in the entire thing. So I'm quite bitter about that. So this is a book where I did like it. I, I only really liked one of the sisters, so a third of the book, well less than a third of the book because she wasn't narrating much. And I liked some ideas behind it, but there's a lot of like plot holes and I think the world can be developed a little bit more. So my battery was fully charged when I started filming and I filmed for 12 minutes and it died. So, what was it all about? <laughs> Three Dark Crowns. At the end of the book, there's so, so many huge plot twists that completely change how the entire story has been interpreted. So as much as I didn't actually like this book, I have to read the second one just because I need any dancers, basically. And the most recent book I read is Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. And I've seen this book like pop up on my Goodreads like recommendations a few times, I wasn't really interested. And then I read Paper Fury's review, you might know that I live and die for Paper Fury, and I was sold. And I read it, and it got a solid like 5 out of 5 full stars, it's now one of my favourite books of all time. So I didn't actually read the description properly when I started reading this book, but I had a rough idea, and when I started reading it I thought like, oh it's going to be like Percy and Monty doing like a little lad trip around Europe. And it was not that. I think it's set up to give the idea that, up, like, you know, lads holiday, but it's not that. There's pirates in there, there's like man hunts, and it's incredible. It's so much better than I thought it could be. And this is a book where I haven't seen, like, basically any attention towards it. So it wasn't overhyped. I went in with literally no expectations besides lad trip around Europe. And I love it so much. <laughs> And this book, I think I might have read it, I may have read most of it in one day. I think it's a 500 and something page book, but I like sped through this so quickly. And also I've recently come back from a, not recently, but by the time this goes up, I went in July, at the start of July. And I came back from a trip in Italy which involves driving through a lot of Europe. So this gave me some like, nostalgic flashbacks to not very long ago. The books I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading the fourth that went wrong. The fourth Raven Cycle book, which is The Raven King, and I'm also reading A Dark Shade of Magic, because one of my friends read it and she loved it, so I also have to read it and probably love it. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. In the comments below, let me know your favourite book you've read this year so far, and also what you're currently reading, and I will see you next time. Bye!